Thank you. How's everyone doing today? Okay. So I'm here today to have a conversation about the way we produce food and the extreme effect it's having on our environment. The way we produce food and the technology we need to create and build a sustainable f future is incredibly exciting. But humanity require, is on the precipice of a disaster. Sea levels are rising, greenhouse gas emissions are rising, and agricultural waste flows from the land, poisoning our rivers and oceans. Climate change is the defining issue of our time, and agriculture is at the epicenter of this disaster. The very system we rely on for food is, response, is built on the foundation of agricultural practices that disrespect the subtle harmony of life on Earth. Industrial agriculture is responsible for 70% of the fresh water use on Earth. It uses 37% of the land, consumes 30% of our energy, and is responsible for 20% of our greenhouse gas emissions. These are just some statistics that highlight the staggering inefficiencies of the system that we've created. Not to mention the frivolous use of toxic chemicals, artificial fertilizers and pesticides that permeate our water supplies and saturate all of the fresh produce that we consume. Agriculture is engineered to mass produce a handful of crop varieties. And this has led to three quarters of the crop varieties that were historically grown for food being wiped out. When 70% or 75% of the fresh produce you buy in the US was grown in California and shipped across the country through long and inefficient supply chains, the layers of food waste, pollution, food miles begin to stack up and it is clear that this is a system that's simply not viable for the sustainable future that we need to build. Where are your children, your grandchildren, your great-great-grandchildren going to get their food from? And how are they going to eat in a way that doesn't destroy the environment around us? Because we know that in just 32 years' time, there are going to be 9.7 billion people on Earth. And 68% of those people will live in cities. And this rate of development is incredibly exciting and it presents opportunities for people around the world. But we must look at the systems that we rely on to sustain ourselves if we plan to keep up. Just look at a city like Shenzhen, a small town of 30,000 people. And in 32 years, it is a bustling metropolis of over 10 million people. An urbanization like this is happening all across the world, and in many cases, in places that simply cannot sustain themselves. Just look at Dubai, a desert town, now a bustling city of millions of people built out of the desert, completely unable to sustain itself. In just 32 years' time, demand for food is going to increase by over 50%. And yet yields are set to decrease by anywhere from 15 to 35% as a result of climate change. We are in for a very bumpy ride. This chart shows the forecast for agricultural productivity change over the next 50 years. And it is clear that countries around the world are going to see massive disruption in the way that we grow food especially in the United States, and especially in a lot of countries that already struggle to sustain their populations. This should alarm each and every one of you, unless you live in Canada, because it gets a lot greener out there. <laughs> but it's not all bad news. We're able to create technology that makes financial sense. And with that, we can develop the collective will of society backed by human ingenuity and develop sustainable technologies that will enable us to create a new future. Solar power is one such industry that reached an inflection point where it is now a cost-effective alternative to fossil fuel generation for power. It has grown 50% year on year as a result. And we're seeing innovations like renew in renewable energy, electric cars, desalinization, and of course vertical farming that pave the way for us to create a sustainable future. Sustainable agriculture needs to reach its inflection point. But when we look at agriculture, it is such a multifaceted giant that it is impossible to find a one-size-fits-all solution. But one such solution 
is hydroponic agriculture. And alongside crop monitoring dr drones and regenerative practices, this is a solution that allows crops to be grown indoors without soil. Nutrients and minerals are dissolved in water and given to the plants just, like wh just when they need it, like an IV drip. It allows crops to be grown using 90% less water. You can double or even triple the yields, and it can allow for continuous year-round growth, all without the use of any pesticides or harmful chemicals. This is a transformative technology that has the power to redefine agriculture as we know it, yet the adoption has been slow. And the 2019 United Nations report on lettuce production, production shows that your average field can produce about three kilograms per meter squared per year. It's okay. Your average greenhouse using hydroponics can produce up to 15 kilograms per meter squared per year. The amazing thing about this kind of agriculture is you can actually move farming indoors and you can stack these farms on top of each other to create controlled vertical farms and in doing so increase the productivity to 65 kilograms per meter squared per year. And when I first learned about this transformative technology, I was amazed that it wasn't everywhere and I was asking myself, well, why isn't this accessible? Well, vertical farming has issues. It's expensive. It's very complicated to learn, and running a commercial vertical farm is labor-intensive and very time-consuming. This is a transformative technology that is burdened by the economic realities of implementing it. But like solar, it is reaching a point where it is becoming cost-effective. And when I was looking into vertical farming, accessible vertical farming, I found a lot of this. And there is a thriving community of global growers, but this isn't exactly going to feed anyone. And at the other end of the spectrum, you have massive industrial vertical farms that cost millions of dollars to set up. They require teams of horticulturalists, experts, and engineers to operate them. And they remain completely out of reach of most people around the world and all the people that need them most. But like a lot of industries, the Internet of Things is set to transform this industry and make it more accessible in the process. Sis sensors have never been cheaper. Processing power has never been more abundant. And as a result, we can use automation and data to streamline the processes of operating indoor farms and make them more accessible and affordable than ever before. And how do we do this? Well, we can track real-time data on every minute variable involved in plants growth, from the environment, the CO2, the temperature, humidity, to the solution, the nutrient concentration, the pH, everything you can think of that goes into growing a plant. We can track that data in real time, and then we can tweak those variables to create gr unique growth recipes that are optimized for specific crop varieties. We can actually recreate the climate of the Italian hill just outside Genoa, where Genovese basil originated from. We can recreate the environment just off the Chilean coast, where strawberries originated from. And in doing so, we can network farms and remotely program them to grow crops and optimize those growth recipes to create the best yields and the best flavors. This technology not only allows us to grow crops hydroponically, but it allows us to grow new crops hydroponically. And we've begun partnering with seed banks like the Jefferson Center for Historic Plants here in Charlottesville. And in doing so, we've actually started to learn how to grow crops that have been wiped out by the industrial food system. And what we're doing is using this engine to learn how to grow these crops and increase biodiversity and use hydroponics to reintroduce crops back into the food system. And in doing so, create new varieties, better nutrition, and better flavors for all of you as consumers. Technology is enabling this industry to become more affordable and automation is making it more efficient and easier to use than ever before. And the farms of the future will be so simple that they'll be controlled by an app on your phone. And this is going to make them more engaging to people around the world. And this technology is going to transform this industry and make it flourish around the world. We're seeing the creation of a new distributed agricultural industry where we can bring urban farms into urban areas using controlled vertical hydroponics. Imagine going to the grocery store and buying produce that was harvested in front of you. This is now a reality. We're eliminating inefficient supply chains and bringing agriculture into urban areas. 
and in doing so, providing healthier, more nutritious produce for everyone. It is now co economically possible to build farms at the point of consumption. Imagine going into a restaurant and having them harvest y your produce in front of you and prepare it right there on site. It's now a reality, and in doing so, we're enabling businesses to become more self-sufficient, and the technology of the future in these network of farms is going to be so easy to use that you could even do it in your own home. This is a bit like a vegan wine cellar. These farms are a reality today. This is a farm just outside of Charlottesville at the Boar's Head Resort. They are able to grow 300 heads of lettuce per week, 200 basil plants, and all of their microgreens every single week throughout the year on just 200 square feet. These farms are incredibly productive, and they're enabling institutions to pioneer a new way of growing food. And they are able to save money and increase quality and this is one farm that is part of a network of farms that use this engine of intelligence to automatically grow crops that learn from one another and continuously refine their operations so that these accessible small micro farms can become accessible to businesses, individuals, and communities around the world. And technology-enabled vertical farming is creating a food system that benefits society that will protect the environment, that will increase access to healthy and nutritious food. It will provide educational and job-creating opportunities for communities around the world. And crucially, it will increase resiliency by allowing agriculture to move back into cities and communities that have lost the ability to grow food. Vertical farming has become a critical infrastructure piece in the sustainable future that we need to build. This is a solution that exists today. And through advances in technology, it's starting to make financial sense. As a result, indoor farming and vertical farming have reached an inflection point. Thank you very much.